Hey everybody, welcome back to another Step by Step with Jake, brought to you by Mishka Toy Soldier. And in today's episode, I'll be painting and weathering a 3 printed model by Grim Prince, so let's get to it. So I apologize in advance, this setup I'm in right now is not my current setup because I am currently quarantining due to COVID. <laughs> so for the next week, I will be here in um, a far enough location for my friends and family to work remotely and also work on tutorials. So first things first on this build is building the model itself. Now, Brian over at Grim Prince has done an amazing job creating some wonderful 3D model kits that combine the aesthetics of both Warhammer 40K and also World War II. In this particular case, it is modeled after a German half-track, the 251, and the kit comes with a variety of different options. As you can see here in the footage in front of you, there are some magnet slots. Those are there so you can put on different options for the kit and make it any sort of vehicle you want to. I believe in this kit alone, there are probably four or five different options for the weapon loadouts, for the launcher, for the type of vehicle it'll be with the machine gun or LAS cannon on top. And it can also orientate the top plate there back and forth to make it so the turret is more forward or more backward. Overall, the kit is very easy to assemble and it was a blast to put together. I forgot to mention, all of Brian's kits, he has a very ingenious way of making so he can store all your stuff. In the bottom of each model, there's a compartment where you can put all the extra pieces with a little flap. In this case, this is more for a diorama purpose, so I didn't need that, but here it is. It went together smoothly and was very fun to put together. Now let's move on to painting. Once the assembly is done, it's time for me to prime the model and prep it for paint. In this case, I use Vallejo's Black Hobby Spray Paint. It may not actually be a primer, but it's something that I love to use because it goes on so smoothly. Once the primer was in place, I went about putting a layer of a, I don't know, maybe like a primer or a rust layer down because I will be using hairspray chipping for this model. I typically don't use hairspray chipping or in this case Warren effects chipping fluid because I typically like to use brush chipping but I wanted to change it up. I'm trying a new method this year of more or less going out of my comfort zone and trying methods I didn't like before. So in this case the process is to put down the chipping fluid over my rust color, put a white in this case, a kind of a flat white color down to emphasize the color that's coming in, like the Russian 4BO, and then go over that to create more emphasis, more actual color. Now, why am I putting down the white paint? Because it helps make the luminosity of the green paint stand out more, and so I'm not competing with that dark rust color underneath. It's a good trick I picked up from Night Ship's channel, and then once that's all done with, I start taking the very tedious task of using a toothpick or an airbrush needle, an old one obviously, and start very, very gently in controlled fashion of going around and creating nice minute chips around the model. Now contrary to my previous belief that hairspray chipping can't be controlled, using this method does add a bit of control to it. You wet the surface down, take your toothpick, uh, toothpick or your needle, and go very, very lightly until you get the chips that you want. Overall, I had a lot of fun, it's different, but you always gotta remember to varnish it up, otherwise you will lose your progress with the chipping. So, once it was sealed up, I then applied another layer of the chipping fluid and took my own crafted 3D stencils for my logos of this tank. I then went about adding some off-white by Real Colors and, you know, just put the insignias on there as I went. Now you'll see I've got some overspray here and there, but that's the nice thing about using the chipping fluid, because if you do make a mistake while painting your insignias, you can go back with some water and clean it up. Once I was happy with the camouflage and insignias, I took a brush, moistened with a little bit of water, and went about creating the distressing marks on both the insignia and also on the camouflage stripes you see there. Like I said, it was nice to be able to clean up the insignia where I didn't make some mistakes and also to create some more wear and tear because typically in life, when you do have a tank with any sort of insignia on it, it will get distressed over time. So 
So with the painting process out of the way, it's time to get down to the weathering stage. I wanted to try something new out this time, so I took out the new-ish shaders by ammo and got the light rust color out. I've had these for a while, but never really got into them until I saw Night Shift's video about how to use them correctly when looking to emphasize and add some different you know, effects to the model. I took the light rust wash, put that over the chipping area, and also any area with a lot of wear, and I took the dirt and grime version of one and went around all the recesses that I could. This really was a good way to pop the model and add some contrast. And the nice thing about it is if you mess up, they are water soluble, so I just took a little bit of Q-tip there and then went back and cleaned it up. But one thing to keep in mind though is that they are water soluble, so if you do add any sort of water product, like an acrylic on top of it, it will come off. So I always suggest, like in this case, do a satin varnish before you do anything else, just to keep your, process, your uh, progress there preserved and then move on. Now, at this stage, I started using more weathering oils in my workflow because I like them a lot better than my enamel washes. Why? Because they are more, more, very more <laughs> uh, pigment saturated. So I took some VMS uh, oil expert, created a wash out of the oils, and then went about doing some nice pin washes around the model. I also then used the same uh, oil expert to go and use as a thinner, or you can use some you know, normal en enamel thimmer or orderless uh, spirits in this case, uh, to just clean up the model and then go about and more or less add or subtract and create a contrast. Now I will admit, I'm not sure where the footage went when I <laughs> did the tires and the metal bits of the model, but I can tell you it's just a, you know, kind of like a brown black or a, a dark, dark gray for the tires and the different steel elements in the model. But as you can see here, I'm just cleaning up the different uh, areas of the wash I made with the oils, got a little out of hand and I'm more or less blending it too, so I'm not just completely taking it away. Now, I did realize over a while that my process might have dimmed down certain portions of the model, so I took a white paint, and you could even use a yellow paint, and created more of a luminosity elements on the upper panels. So I just took it, took some of the white oils, dabbed it on there, created different spots of lighter color coloration, or I should say luminosity, and did that way. And now I'm going back over all the chips where I had uh, done a little more distressing with the chipping fluid and I'm using a light rust wash by ammo, an ammo product and, and just going in very very lightly adding a fine layer almost like a filter over all the chipped areas. And then once they're there I let them dry and I come back in and I blend them very subtly. I want to make sure they're barely even noticeable over the chips because otherwise it'll look like it's a wrecked vehicle. I just want to make it look like it's been heavily used and not necessarily wrecked. So here we go. Now that the oils and contrast portion out of the way, I decided to get out the earth pigments by BMS and really give these a run for the money. I typically stay away from using pigments because I personally hate them because they can come off. But stuff by VMS is a different monster altogether. And by monster, I mean it's incredible. Um, the pigments go on wonderfully. You can use the alkali binder here to apply them. And when they go on, they actually look like really, real authentic accumulated dirt. And then you take a hair dryer, like I did in this case, dry them and then and then dried within about five minutes and you go back and clean them up with their universal carrier. So the process is put the pigments down, apply the alkaloid uh, carrier, the fixer, and then come back in and blend them with the universal weathering carrier. It's a wonderful system to work with. It's reversible. And I think the one I was using is either um, active for 24 hours or your 12 hours. So you've got a lot of time to kind of come back in there and create some nice, beautiful effects that can either be really stark or very subtle and create a very convincing look the way that you know a tank could accumulate dirt and mud after some time. So for the lower portions of the model, I wanted to make it look like it's been out in a very dense forest with a lot of mud, probably right around like a springtime. So I took the, the mix I made, made it thicker with more pigment and more alkaline binder and just slather that sucker on there. But once it's dry, you could go back in with a stiffer brush and remove the excess and it creates a nice, really good effect of making it look like there's accumulated mud deposits all over the model. 
or that nice, you know, like kind of crusty look to it. The mud's damp, but not quite sloppy. But after that was done, I did my usual process of adding some graphite to the different edges around the model, make it look like it has really chipped down to the metal layer, the steel, I should say, and uh, really add a nice little accent, a little pop there. And then from there, I got some you know, dried lichen and really went to town making it look like it's been put out in the woods to look like it's camouflaged. Uh, I did a lot of research and reference photos of the Finnish army. I know I'm obsessed, but the the dried lichen does a great job of making it look like it's really, you know, scale sized branches and other foliage added. And also, it's always good to add a little bit of uh, either a beige or a tan to your foliage there, and it looks like it's authentic. Well, that's all for this week's model. I can check out my social right there, put it on the screen. And once again, thanks for watching. If you feel inclined, hit like and subscribe to the channel for Michigan Toy Soldier. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks and have a great one.